Hey everybody, I'm Ricardo Rangel here from Las Vegas and this is Andy Wimmer known as El Gringo. Hi. Hi. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andy's car. This is his Mercedes. And he is going to tell us about it. But I'm going to have to do it in English because yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. Because I don't remember enough Spanish no, go ahead. to do this in Spanish. Anyway, so I'm here in my uh, El Gringo mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of Ricardo. Okay, so this is my car and um, this is a sort of a system that I always, that I always build. Um, and for me, in car audio, I have two what we call pet peeves. Mm -hmm. uh, two small things that I find irritating. One of those is that when we build two channel systems and we demo those two channel systems for a customer or somebody who's interested, um, we always walk out to our car, they walk towards the passenger seat, and we have to say, no, 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 you have to sit over there, <laughs> yeah. right? Because yeah. the passenger seat sucks and the driver's seat is good. Um, so I don't like that because I think that both seats, both front seats should sound great and they should sound the same. And the other reason is that say a customer comes in and buys a ten or fifteen thousand dollar audio system and he's really proud of it. So he goes to, he goes, it's a Friday, he's mm -hmm. going to go out for a couple of beers with one of his buddies who also likes car audio and his buddy, but, he's, but he doesn't know anything about car audio. So, so the customer drives. The buddy, the friend, gets in the passenger seat, he turns on the stereo, and the friend goes, you spent how much on this? And yeah. the driver says, I spent 12 grand on it. And the guy in the passenger seat says, you got ripped off because it sucks. And then the guy says, no, 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 but it's great over here in the driver's seat, right? So so I don't like that. So, and I think that both front seats should sound great. Um, and all you have to do in order to make both front seats sound great is sell a few more speakers mm -hmm. and uh, a, a DSP with uh, some surround sound processing in it. Surround sound in cars is not for movies. It's not so that uh, the spaceships in Star Wars fly over the back seat. We, it's for better stereo and that's what this, and that's what this car does. Okay. Hi Gary. <laughs> this is strange enough. Why? Because I'm wearing the Mexican wrestler mask? I don't know, ask Gary. <laughs> you have to put this on Facebook, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in the in each of the front doors and the back doors are the same, there's a GB10, a GB25, and a GB60. So three-way all active in the front. Three-way all active in the back for the side speakers. Same thing, GB10, GB25, GB60. And in the package shelf, there's a GB10 and a GB40. These are the surround speakers. And a GB10D4 subwoofer. And then in the center, because in the center speaker up here, which is uh, custom thanks to a buddy of mine named Gary Bell. Gary Bell. Gary Bell. Um, uh, he helped me with a bunch of machining for this aluminum thing. There's yeah, a, I saw the pictures. There's a GB20, uh, two GB40s and a GB10. A center channel. So the reason for the center channel is so that um, instead of having to set time alignment to get a phantom center image, mm -hmm. um, the surround sound processor steers all of the center information to the center speaker. So the driver's seat sounds just like the passenger seat. And then in the trunk, Speaking of the phantom, that's your new name. Yes. No, I'm El it's Gringo. El Gringo. I'm, I'm El Gringo. El Gringo. El Gringo, the white guy. And then in the trunk, there's nothing. Except for a 24-channel uh, custom Class D, 24 by 50, 24 channel by 50 watts a channel um, with a built-in DSP and DTS neural surround. Cool. Get down there, bye. There you go. <laughs> Is this thing going into production? The amp. I, we're we're gonna work on amps with DSP. I don't know that there's much of a market in the aftermarket for a 24 channel amplifier, and it would be murderously expensive. There's just the connectors to build this were more than 250 bucks, just for connectors. So it'd be it would be crazy expensive, but. Um, there's definitely a, a market for 
a different kind of DSP amplifier with fewer channels. And if you need 24 channels, then you can use a couple of them. So, so we're working on it. Cool. Thanks, Ricardo. No, thank you, Andy. Nos vemos desde Las Vegas con mi amigo el gringo. <laughs> Thanks, Andy.